Last time we discovered that we could go ahead and melt aluminum inside of a coffee can. We could then transfer that molten material and cast an ingot. So today what I want to do is part two. I want to replicate that experiment, but I want to do it on a larger scale. I also want to go ahead and create something called green sand or casting sand. I also want to make an improvised mold or casting flask. I then want to take that molten material and I want to transfer it to that flask and I want to cast a usable item. But before we do that, I want to go ahead and talk about this. Most people do this using a foundry or a forge. This is not new technology. But I got thinking about it and I said, well, what if we can do this in a basic campfire using basic items? And for me, the core of my kit and every kit will always be the 10 C's. No matter where I go, what I do, I'll add to it, but I'll never take away from it. So I thought, what do I carry in the 10 C's? Well, I carry two stainless steel wide mouth bottles. With those bottles, I carry two nesting cups. So I thought, why not sacrifice one of my nesting cups that are stainless steel and see if I can melt aluminum in that stainless steel cup, transfer it to a mold and cast a shape. So what you're gonna see right here is part two. It is a controlled experiment in my backyard. And I apologize once again for that, but we're gonna to try to melt aluminum in a stainless steel nesting cup, transfer it to a flask and cast a shape. Enjoy. What you see in front of you right here are your basic materials. We got play sand at the top, a five gallon bucket for the sand. You're gonna mix up some clay and sand. You have your aluminum cans, you're actually gonna melt down. And on the left there, we have two forms. That's gonna be your improvised casting flask. It was a two by four, eight feet long, and I cut them into one foot sections and nailed them together. For this next step, you want some sort of spice grinder or blender. And what I'm doing is I found cat litter. It has bentonite clay. Now, not all cat litter has bentonite. Some of it has natural clay. You want to try and stay away from natural clay. You want to look for something that says bentonite clay. Now, a lot of the cat litters don't list that ingredient. So I, you have to go online and actually research it and find out which ones have it. This one here has it. I know Fresh Step has it, and I believe Arm & Hammer has it. Um, but go ahead and grind that up. If you notice, I was using ice right here. The spice grinder started overheating, and I found that if I put ice around it in a fan, it actually kept it from overheating, so it worked out well. Uh, my advice is just get a blender. Once it's all ground up into a powder, I transferred that to a coffee can and filled the coffee can up so I can go ahead and make my clay. You can see it's real fine powder right there. Taking my coffee can full of powder and a screen from my window, I'm gonna go ahead and run that powder over a sieve and this guarantees only the powder gets inside that bucket. The leftover larger granules can be put back in the coffee can and reprocessed later. This mix right here, I went with one coffee can of bentonite clay and three coffee cans of play sand. Now I want to mix this up thoroughly, so the sand is kind of dry, so I went and dampen the exterior with a spray bottle, dig into the center, dampen it again, and just repeat the process. You're not looking for something that came out of the ocean where it's sopping wet like you're going to build a sand castle, but you want it damp enough to where when you go ahead and squeeze it together, grab a fistful and squeeze it, it should form a, some sort of a ball or a shape, and you want to go ahead and break that in half. If it's a clean break, and you can drop both pieces and they don't crumble apart, then you're good to go. Take whatever item you want to cast, place it at the bottom of your form or the bottom of your casting flask, and you're gonna add about one inch of dirt and then compact that dirt down. Once it's compacted, you wanna add another inch of dirt and compact it and so on until the form is actually full. And you go back and forth like that, overlapping, diagonal, etc., until it's all compacted. And like I mentioned before, you'll add your next lift of one inch and repeat the process.
and your final lift right here. You want to make sure it's all compacted all the way around. And when you're done, you want to go ahead and scrape it off. You can go ahead and flip it over, and if you've done it right, you've got a correct mixture, you can see that the green sand's not falling out. It's good to go. There's your knife. If I pull that knife out right now, it would be a nice, clean impression. But we're going to go ahead and leave it in and dig around it one inch, and make sure it's compacted down. We want to do this so when we set our top half of our form on there, or our top half of our improvised casting flask, the top can be compacted down inside there. And the final step is to go ahead and coat it with baby powder and then brush it off the excess. The reason why you want to do this is so the top half of your casting flask won't stick to the bottom half. I'm told that charcoal or white ash works just as well and I'll go ahead and try that next time and see if we get that dialed in. Once you got cleaned off, grab the other half of your flask, place it on top, and find something to make a hole. In this case, I use a Coke can. It could be a dowel, it could be a broom handle, it could be whatever you want. You need something that you can cast around it so it leaves a hole. You want to place that about an inch away from the object that you're trying to cast. And just like the bottom, fill it in one inch lifts, compact it until it's full. You'll notice right here my mold is not full. The reason why that happened is because I actually ran out of sand. But it didn't matter anyways because I have three inches of fill inside there. It's a two by four. And I'm only gonna cast something that's a quarter inch thick. From here you wanna go ahead and remove whatever you put inside there to create that hole. Just twist it gently back and forth. You don't wanna pull it out of there and disturb the mold. So just gently get it out. I would suggest using something thicker than a Coke can because the thing wanted to actually crumble, like compress on itself, and it was hard to get it out of there. But once you get it out, you have a hole, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna gently compress the edges to make sure they won't collapse inside the hole. Now there's one final step when messing around with this mold. Gently lift it off 
and you'll notice that once again it doesn't crumble out because you have clay inside the sand right here you can see the indentation you can see it got the baby powder on there you want to gently clean out that hole that the coke can created I'm gonna blow the excess out and this part right here is critical you need to carve a trough or a groove from that circle you can see there on the bottom that leads into where my knife is so first off I gotta remove my knife and then I gotta cut a trench so the molten metal can fall through that hole and follow that trench and basically fill the shape of that knife I'm gonna gently pull it out without destroying my mold and you'll see the bottom half impression right here boom there it is I'll go ahead and turn around the top half so you can see that one and two halves make a hole I'm going to carve the bottom trench right now one line on one side one on the other so you can get the idea the molten aluminum will fall through that hole hit that trench and pour into that shape and whatever I do at the bottom you have to do to the top And like I said before, two halves make a hole. So what I want to do is match up that top part of my casting flask with the bottom. So that trench has got to be in the exact same spot. That's all I'm doing right here. Carve it out the same way. Remove the excess. I'll go ahead and place them both together. And we're good to go. Now I just walked off to my fire pit. I want you to check out the amount of coals that I have inside this thing. It's about half full. So there's the stainless steel nesting cup and an ingot. And that's the remains of my last video where I had my cans I melted inside the tin. I placed it inside the nesting cup, put it in the fire, and I want to build wood around that. This final part of the experiment right here is the important part. I wanted to go ahead and do this without a foundry or a forge, just in a normal campfire or a fire pit. The 10 C's are the core of my kit, it should be the core of every kit. Part of those 10 C's is a Nalgene bottle, some sort of stainless steel wide mouth bottle with a stainless steel nesting cup. I carry two cups because I carry two bottles. I'm going to go ahead and sacrifice one of those cups and see if I can melt aluminum in a fire. If I'm successful, I know I can repeat this process in the field whenever I have to, with minimal gear and once again with no foundry and no forge. And we'll fast forward here at about 25-30 minutes. There's a melted ingot and I think I added about five more cans to that as well. And I'll scrape the top off and show you that that's all molten aluminum right there. I'm going to go ahead and grab that nesting cup and transfer it to my casting flask. Dump it into that hole. See it's all liquid. There's always going to be some residue left inside the cup. But once it cools down you go ahead and pop that out. Save that because you go ahead and melt it later. And that should be good to go. We're going to go ahead and break our improvised casting flask apart and see what happened. There's a large ingot right there where it filled the rest of the hole up and I want to see if it actually filled the entire mold and it did. Look at that. That's extremely hot right there but you can already see there's the shape of the knife so it worked out pretty well. Let's Look at that. close up on that. 
I'll go ahead and dig this thing out here in a minute. Look at that. And I got a nice ingot attached to that, so I go ahead and just get a hacksaw or even a carbon steel file and cut that off. And I can let that ingot cool down, carry it with me, and melt it down at a later date and basically repeat the process. There's an extreme close up right there. Look at that. You can even see the detail on it. Oh, there's a bevel on the knife. This right here is the best part. Taking a carbon steel file, all you gotta do is just work the excess off there. And it actually works out pretty well. And there's your finished product. It's not sharpened yet, but you can see the bevel and the detail on it. So I'm happy, it's good to go. Welcome back, that was sweet. As usual, let's go ahead and talk about this. Using a minimum kit, as in the 10 C's, and a campfire, we were able to melt aluminum in a stainless steel nesting cup or crucible, transfer that molten material on a large scale to an improvised mold or casting flask and create a usable item. Now for me, as mentioned before, that opens the door to several possibilities. Imagine spearheads, frog gigs, slingshots, utensils, spoon, fork, spatula, tongs, bowls, plates, cups, containers, brackets, candle holders, replacement parts, and my personal favorite, knives and stabbing weapons. Thank you for your comments, views, support. Thanks for watching. Get out in the woods, have some fun, and I'll catch you next time.